everyone, I just wanted to talk about the best game that has a Jedi in it as its main thing, and just the state I was given this game to record and review. If you just don't want to be spoiled about the game, make sure you go to the Facebook for the channel and check out the Let's Play that is currently being posted there. But back to the matter at hand, we're going to give a good example of how to port a game. Things we will look at are control, story, and multiplayer, and just how the game feels and runs. So now we are looking at the controls. The controls are actually very well done. Uh, the only thing I really changed was the jump and crouch button. I switched those from jump being by default A to B, and crouch by default being push and left stick to A. It's the control method that I use for the regular Xbox version of the game when I'm trying to actually play it and get used to it. Hence why it wasn't as difficult for me to transition from this uh, to this one on the Switch. The next thing to note is you do have a sensitivity meter. You have invert controller, invert smooth. You have rumble. And you have the uh, motion controls that you can turn on and off. Those motion controls actually helped me out a little bit when playing, when using the sniper. But I eventually turned them off because I don't like motion controls being on by default. So, this is the movement section. We will now move on to the interaction section. So under here, this is pretty much how you attack. Uh, attack is ZR or L2, depending on what system you're playing on. Alternate attack is ZL or L2. A regular attack is like swing your lightsaber, uh, use your regular blaster bolt fire. Alternate attack is like throw your lightsaber, kick if you're using a uh, Darth Maul style, or if you're using the E11, it's the auto fire that you saw in the intro. That's what that is. And then third person I put in as, I believe, push and left thumbstick, since I changed that in the movement section. And then lock on is push in right stick. Now we're going to move on to the weapons itself. Only thing I'm going to cover in here is right bumper or L1 or R1 is activate your lightsaber or turn off your lightsaber. Left and right on the D-pad is next and previous weapon. You can also see in here you can do left and a button and right and a button and you can switch to a certain weapon itself. That you don't necessarily have to do, uh, but it's there if you want it to. And then finally, we are going to look at the Force uh, Abilities section. This is all about equipping the Force Power, not using the Force Power. One thing that I ran in trouble to because I tried to change some of the controls with that. But to use the Force Power, you use Left Bumper or L1. Uh, to switch between your force powers, it's up on the D-pad or down on the D-pad. And then again, just like the weapons, you can hit up and d or down, plus a button, and you can switch to a certain power. Uh, overall, the controls are very well done. The movement with everything is very tight and fits wonderfully. You'll see throughout this video and the Let's Play that I'm not having as much problem with the movement and everything else. So... On to the next part. Now we're going to be looking at the story for Jedi Academy. It is one of the best things with the game. And on that note, you can choose between male and female for Twi'lek, Keldor, Zabrak, Rodian, and Human. As well as once you get further in the game, between three different styles. Single lightsaber, two lightsaber, or double bladed lightsaber. Each of those has their own uh, hilt styles as well as uh, colors for the lightsabers, and that's how you customize your character. Once you pick the initial race and clothing and saber, because you could start with only a single saber, uh, you then have that locked in until you get to a certain point in the game, and then you will unlock being able to create a new saber based off of the three choices I just mentioned. Like I stated, you start out as a Padawan, you go through your basic Jedi training, then you go off on a set of missions. Each mission, you get to increase one force power by one point. If you do all missions in the game, you get to increase a total of five force powers to the maximum. The story itself has you go into some iconic locations. I am 
gonna show you a couple, but I'm not going to elaborate on why you're there. And then, at the end, you get to have an awesome boss fight, and it's really satisfying, and you get to play the way you want to play. The cool thing with the story is you get to tackle the challenges the way you want to tackle them. For example, there's a part in the final level where you could roll, wall run across the ledge instead of falling down in this pit and going through it, uh interior. But if you want to go through the interior, you can go through the interior and come out the other end. Uh, that's the kind of cool thing that, you know, the game has. And you can solve certain puzzles your way that you want to solve it. Uh, with that said, the story is really, really good. And while I'm talking through all this, I'm going to leave you with a clip of one of my favorite levels. And that's one that you're helping Kyle destroy a uh, Imperial ship. So, now after this, we will move on to the next part. And I hope you guys enjoy Now we're on to the multiplayer aspect of the game. It is not exactly the same as PC because you cannot host matches against other people. You can host matches against AI. And there is no server list. Uh, you can only join matchmaking or start solo games. That is why they have different types, or not that is why. You know, it still has the different game type modes in there. And they are free for all, dual, power duel, team free for all, siege, and capture the flag. I have played free for all and team free for all. One thing to note is there are some changes, or not changes with the controls, but the controls in multiplayer are a different setup from single player. It's the exact same setup if you don't change your controls. But if you did like I did, you have to go in and manually change them again under the multiplayer menu. That is one thing to note. Uh, besides that, you get the same uh, options that you, you do for single player. You get to choose if you want a pre-made model or a custom model with the same options as single player. Then you get to choose your saber style, force powers, and the force powers are split into light and dark. So you have to choose uh, what side of the force you want to be on. That is the only real downfall with this. Uh, besides that, the game, you know, the multiplayer is a blast. I have, I'm gonna have probably like five minutes of footage playing of a match I did with bots while trying to join a game uh, because servers are acting all funky one night, so you get to see that in the background. And it's really fun. There are some advanced saber combos. If you can learn those, you can master multiplayer. And that is like doing with a heavy style and single saber you can roll into somebody and stab them in the head for a quick kill or if you're doing heavy style you, I believe I know in the PC version you used to be able to but I haven't tried it on this one because I've been doing double saber but you used to be able to break through somebody's attack if they're doing the quick style and it, you know the heavy style is harder on hits but slower on speed and quick style is quicker on speed but lighter on uh, hits so you can counter the quick with the heavier and so on so forth and it's actually really cool you get to see some of this different saber styles in this match with the bots you get to see how to add bots uh it's all really fun and i hope you guys enjoyed this game i recently have not made up a list of or categories i guess on my reviews but this time around i am and they are going to be stay away from it, try it, buy it. Those are what I'm going uh, to start doing in my reviews. This one, I personally believe you should buy it. Because this is a good port. They do things well in here. Unlike Jedi Academy, movement is precise. Yes, it's still a little funky on trying to do the wall running. Because 
on PC version, if I remember right, you had to uh, hold the direction that you're on the wall, and then you're able to run on that wall. But while you're doing that, you still gotta hold forward or back or whatever way you're doing it. So it's a little bit more tricky with how to pull that off in this, but with enough practice, you can learn it. And it seems like all the advanced combos and everything are still here. So I do suggest this. I played all of story mode docked with a pro controller and it was fabulous. I played a bunch of multiplayer undocked in handheld mode with the Joy-Cons attached to the Switch while laying in bed and it was it was very challenging to like I used to, you know, doing the movements with the Joy-Cons because that was before I finished the story mode. But because I did that, it helped me get better at the story mode because I got used to how the saber combos and everything work. And you can see that in the uh, Let's Plays. You can see in the early missions, I think I did most of the multiplayer playing around, or before part 10 or 13, like in between there. And then after that, you just start seeing me take off with the easy, or being able to control a lot easier. Because then, after that, I put the Switch into the dock and I used my Pro Controller and was playing multiplayer matches as well. One thing to note, I have not ran into anybody uh, on the Switch itself because every time I get done with a multiplayer match with real people, I check the players met or players recently played with under the friends uh, area on the Switch and I have not found anybody. So they're either PS4 players, PC players, or bots named like actual players. But that is everything with the multiplayer. I've rambled a little bit here, so the multiplayer clip's going to be a little bit longer, but that's okay. Like, again, uh, I give this the buy it. It is on PS4 and Switch for the re-release. It is also on the original Xbox and GameCube on disc, and then digitally on Xbox One, and then you have it on disc and digitally through Steam and Good Old Games, I believe, and most likely Humble Bundle through Steam or Good Old Games, one of the two, on uh, Humble Bundle. So you can get this game anywhere. I will warn you, the PC or the Xbox and GameCube version is a little bit uh, different from the PC version, but it's still worth playing because it's still just as good. So that's my review in the end I would like to thank Aspire Media I hope I pronounced that right for the chance to review this even after the uh, upset review I guess it would be or the angry review I gave for Jedi uh, or Jedi Outcast this is 10 times better than how that was just state that now so with everything else have a nice day thank you for watching don't forget to like comment share in the bottom let me know what saber styles and force powers you like to use in this game in multiplayer. Peace out, everybody.